Okay, you guys, it is 5 p.m. and we are eating dinner. Here's what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about sleep because I've had terrible sleep before and it doesn't matter how healthy you are, how good you're eating, how good a shape you're in, how successful you are, it just none of it matters if you aren't sleeping well. So today I'm gonna talk about how I fixed my terrible sleep. Number one, case in point, eat early. It's 5 p.m. We're eating dinner. The big meals that are hard to digest, I eat early. What are you guys having? Um, Green curry? Uh-huh. Max, how is it? Good. Yummy? I have a tofu. You have a tofu? Yeah. This is our green curry. Oh my gosh, you guys. So good. It's been weeks since we had this. It's got broccoli, carrots, tofu, potatoes, zucchini, onion, garlic. This is veggie loaded. And again, 5 p.m., early dinner. That means it's all gonna digest way before I lay down and go to bed, which means my body's not working when I lay down. I just want my body to be healing, recovering, sleeping hard when my head hits the pillow. Walking back to the bedroom now to kind of start my evening routine. It is a little bit tricky now. I have to say I'm a little bit mixed on daylight savings in the longer days. If the sun doesn't set till 9 p.m., it makes for a later bedtime. It's important to have a set bedtime, not just for us to know like, oh, okay, it's time for me to start winding down, but it's also really important for setting our circadian rhythm. So I'm going to talk about a couple things in regards to setting your circadian rhythm because it's real. It's a very real thing that takes our thinking mind and our doing body out of the equation and kind of lets nature take over. And that's really what we want to do here is get into such a good sleep routine where again, we have a set bedtime, a set wake time, and our body just knows. So I brought you guys back to the bedroom for a reason. And technically I'm breaking my own rule here or I'm breaking Aaron and my rule here by doing work because I'm recording a video in the bedroom. There are no speakers in this room. There is not a TV in this room and there hasn't been since we moved in and there never will be because the bedroom is a peaceful place made for relaxation and sleep. We've got a plant here in the corner. We've got our cross here. We've got other spiritual items and soft things. We've got a diffuser and essential oils. These lights are on dimmers, okay? So in an hour or so when the sun actually sets and these lights come on, I will turn them on and then as the evening progresses, I'll dim them down, dim them down, and dim them down until the point where we get into bed. The kids even like last night want to read a book. I'll have the lights so dim that we can barely even read our book. In fact, sometimes I just turn them off completely and use a red light to read our books, which is another very important thing I want to touch on and that is light exposure and light sensitivity. So your evening routine and your sleep quality can start first thing in the morning. This again goes back to setting our circadian rhythm. So I've listened to many podcasts and read some research on how beneficial it is to get morning sunlight, that's pre 10 a.m. sunlight, into your eyeballs. So again, if you're in a place like Florida, like us, where you can get up and go directly outside, great. If not, go sit in a window and do some sun gazing. So if you guys have followed us for a while, you've seen our sun gazing shenanigans in Costa Rica. It sounds more dangerous than it is. We're not staring directly at the sun. We're looking in the direction of the sun, letting the sun come into our eyeballs. And this kind of goes back to maybe a time when we were sleeping and living entirely outdoors, right? We literally went to bed when the sun set because there was no other source of light. There was nothing to be doing in the dark except sleeping. And so we rose with the sun because who can sleep outside, especially when the sun is up? What if it's cloudy? Or what if we live in a place where it's cloudy for months? 
I can actually recommend a happy light. So this is something that Aaron and I have also had for years. We use it more back in Nebraska, obviously living now in the Sunshine State, we don't feel like we need it as much, but that being said, we still do use it on a lot of mornings. It basically mimics sunlight, so when we get up, before we go outside even, we turn this happy light on and we're getting this mimicked sunlight exposure. It basically helps us wake up, but it also starts that clock. So our body knows, okay, sunlight, I'm awake now. And it basically starts that countdown in our body. Like I said before, it's like a natural rhythm. The circadian rhythm is keeping track all day long so that when it gets to be bedtime, if we're hopefully in a good rhythm and a good routine, my body knows it and it wants to calm down and even shut down in some cases. So sitting down after what has been a crazy busy day, thankful for all the things that Aaron and I get to do for work and for play. I got to go to the gym, I got to go for a big long walk with the kids, Max and I are playing baseball. We went to a brave spring training game we had phone calls, a podcast recording, like so many things happen here lately. And we've got another kid on the way, it's crazy. But I'm so thankful for it all. It's so much fun and it's nice to be busy. And that's actually another one of my tips is to keep yourself busy and actually wear yourself out. Aaron and I often talk about the eat, move, rest train or locomotive that when you are eating a healthy diet, you have energy to move your body and when you're moving your body and again wearing yourself out you will undoubtedly rest better too or sleep better moving on another one that i'm about to get up and go do and take you guys with me is to have a wind down routine so again you can probably tell I'm sweaty, I got a greasy face, I've got these old workout clothes on that I've been running around all day in, but now it's time to clean up, shower up, close the computer, put the phone on the charger, and just relax. I mean, seriously, do things that are purely fun, that aren't super stimulating, and just wind down. This is something that's non-negotiable, like when we're traveling, like no matter what. It's super important to me because I know that if I don't do these and I don't get a good night's rest, I'm not as good as I should be. So even though these things seem selfish, they are actually for the greater good, trust me. Should we take showers and maybe watch a movie and hang out? Woo! We've made this bedroom a quiet place, a sanctuary. Here I am, post shower, all spiffed up. You can't tell, but the lights behind me are super dim. Every light in the house is also extremely dim and they're on timers. So at like 10 p.m., maybe 10.30, I can't remember for sure, they all turn off. So it gets even darker about 30 minutes to an hour before our actual bedtime. So here I am still talking about light exposure. Blue light is gonna be like those UV rays. That's what we want in the morning during the day because that's gonna wake us up and energize us. So in the evening, we do not want that. So that brings me to another thing. Let me grab it. And you guys have for sure heard Aaron and I talk. Oh my gosh, and they're super dirty. The kids have obviously been playing with these. You for sure want to wear your blue blocking glasses and now of course you can see my ring light that i have in the reflection so for the sake of the video i'm going to take these off but you guys seriously blue light blocking glasses i believe in them you can even get super blue blocking glasses that aaron and i do have but we don't always wear that are like yellow and even orange lenses. Anything that's overstimulating should definitely be avoided. I've never been a caffeine drinker, no coffee, no caffeinated tea for me. In addition to avoiding stimulants like caffeine, I also definitely say avoid alcohol. It's not working for you on a physiological level. Like it's not good for your brain. It's not good for your body. And you're not falling into that 
REM, that REM state of sleep. Kind of piggybacking off of that, another thing that I've had to do for years, in fact, I'm getting a little bit better about it now, but I used to have to have my room so cold. With Erin being pregnant and with four of us in the bed, sometimes it does get a little hot, so we do still keep our bedroom cool. There's just something about a cooler temperature being better for sleep. Moving on now to the juicy stuff, what can I take? that will help me sleep. Trust me, you guys, I have been in dire straits. There have been times in the past where I have literally had to resort to sleeping pills, you know, anxiety meds, antidepressants. Life is hard, you know, and, and we all go through things. Thank the Lord, like a lot of these medications do help and can help get people back on track, but they are not meant to be used long term. When it comes to natural like sleep supplements, the number one thing you always hear about is melatonin. Now, melatonin is a hormone, so any exogenous hormones that you take can affect your natural hormone production and function, so I don't recommend melatonin. So sleep hinges on proper hormone function and proper hormone function requires that you have all of your nutritional needs met. Even on top of eating a well-rounded, robust plant-based diet like Aaron and I do, we recommend complement because you're going to have all of your bases covered. We like the complement essential because it has everything you need. Vitamin B12, vitamin D and K2. Iodine. Iodine is so important for thyroid function. Thyroid function can affect anxiety. Another one that's essential for brain health, EPA and DHA, your omegas. I love Complement for so many reasons besides the fact that they put everything you need into one capsule. They're top quality and the best products you can get. I'm just gonna say go out and get yourself the Complement Essential. You can go to their website and browse. They've got a whole bunch of other amazing products that Aaron and I use and highly recommend as well. Click the link below to check out Complement. Use our discount code to save and make sure you have your bases covered. So what do I recommend you take for sleep? Well, number one, I like to drink a sleepy time tea. I like a licorice root tea, anything with chamomile in it. When I really need something, I rely heavily on valerian root tea. Now that is really gonna help knock you out, calm you down, etc. Another thing that I use every single night is magnesium. So Aaron and I both actually use a magnesium spray that we spray into our hands, rub on, I like to rub it on my torso and my legs, like the big muscle groups, and it seriously works. Like it relaxes your muscles if you have restless legs, and it just knocks you out in general. Third thing that I put on my body every single night is a lavender spray. So I take my own jojoba and my own lavender and mix it up in a spray bottle and I spray my neck and my chest and I rub it all in and rub it on my hands, rub it on my nose and it's just a, the most calming like scent. On top of things that you can take, I love ashwagandha. This is another thing I've been taking for years that you can put in your tea or your smoothies during the day. I feel like it has seriously like cured some of my anxiety in the past when I'm having like episodes or days or weeks where I'm just feeling anxious or off. I'll start putting some ashwagandha and it doesn't take a lot. This stuff is potent. I've also started taking some ashwagandha in capsule form. Again, I can put some more products in the description below. So as I'm talking about all of these things, this kind of goes under the larger category of again, having a nighttime routine. So. If you guys watch my morning routine, you know that I make sure to make the bed every day. I get my sunlight exposure in the morning. I do my red light. I do all the things. I have a routine, right? Same thing with bedtime. Maybe the kids fall asleep on the couch, which they usually do. Aaron and I will turn the TV off, we'll turn the lights off, and I'll spend at least 20 or 30 minutes on the floor stretching, praying, meditating, just seriously getting myself into a sleep mode. Stretching is so good for you physically, but for me, it like just relieves so much stress. If there's tension in my body, there's often tension in my mind. So I like to stretch that away. While I'm stretching, I'm also doing some deep belly breathing. So 
This is good, again, for your mental health, but again, physiologically, it works wonders. So when you do deep belly breathing, you push up on your diaphragm. Your diaphragm pushes up against the heart. Not only are you slowing your breath, but you are physiologically slowing your heart rate, which of course is gonna slow blood flow everywhere. It's gonna take away your jittery legs. It's gonna slow your mind down. So again, deep belly breathing with some stretching before bed is non-negotiable for me. And this one, you guys, is unique and it's the last one. As I'm laying in bed, I identify as a good sleeper. So in the past, I used to talk about how I was a terrible sleeper, I'm a light sleeper, I'm all of these things, but it's just a story and it was just a phase, right? It was just a short part of my life. And while that might have been true then, it doesn't have to be true now. So I have created a new identity with sleep to where now I identify as a good sleeper. And the biggest shift for me when it comes to sleep has been this mindset shift. I'm really having a hard time sleeping. I'll roll over. I'm typically a, a, a stomach or a side sleeper. I'll roll over and do some deep belly breathing. I'll put my hand on my stomach and feel that going up and down. But the biggest thing is I will tell myself I don't have to sleep. This is just a time for me to relax. In fact, one of the most successful sleep therapy studies, these two researchers actually told their patients that had severe insomnia to not sleep. They said, try not to sleep tonight. Instead of telling yourself, I've got to sleep. If I don't sleep, you know, all these things, say, I don't have to sleep. I'm, in fact, I'm gonna try not to sleep tonight. In fact, this is what these researchers did and they found time and time again that when the focus was switched, that these people said, I'm actually not gonna try to sleep. I'm just gonna try to relax. I'm just gonna lay here and calm my mind and I'm gonna relax for the rest of the night, for six hours, for four hours, however long. I don't need sleep. I'm just gonna use this time as a time to relax people were falling asleep within minutes, literally curing their anxiety with a simple mindset, like a mind game, really. And so that's what I do for myself now. If I'm feeling anxious, if I'm feeling stressed, like, oh no, I can't sleep, I'm not sleeping, and that anxiety, that sleep anxiety starts to build, I simply roll over, do some deep breathing, and tell myself, I don't have to sleep right now. I'm just resting. How often throughout the day do I get to take the time without the kids, without work, without email, without phones, whatever, and just simply lay quietly? Never, we don't. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna do that right now in the middle of the night. I'm just gonna relax. And it seriously works wonders, you guys. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Those are my top tips or my habits for getting better sleep. They've seriously worked for me. They've transformed my life because when you're not sleeping, nothing else is working. And I have so much energy. My skin looks better. Like physically, I can work out harder. I'm happier. All of these things, yes, partly because of the way I eat, partly because of the way I move, but most importantly, it's because of how I am resting and how well I am resting. So. I know I've got so many DMs from people who are concerned with sleep, who struggle, because again, I know how hard it is. So I hope, I really hope that this video is helpful in some way. If you guys need more support, I really want you to reach out to me on Instagram, send me a DM, and definitely join our Eat, Move, Rest membership. You guys, this is the number one place to succeed on whatever it is you need help with, whether it's eating, moving, or resting. We have a pretty big community already of individuals who are constantly on the face on the private Facebook group giving each other feedback. We do monthly challenges with the whole group. We do weekly Zoom calls with the whole group so you can get your questions answered. You can meet and get support from people who are like-minded, who are wanting to eat a plant-based diet or just simply eat more fruits and vegetables, who are wanting to learn how to move their body. We do live workouts. Erin is often leading Saturday morning workouts on there for our private 
private group and or we have our friend Katie doing yoga instruction on there. I would say go check out the membership right now and join. Otherwise, a good place to start is to download our free seven day health transformation guide. This will literally change your perspective on your life as a whole and how you treat your body. It was designed to give you a kickstart to get you to start feeling better in your body. Much love to you guys. We'll be back next week. Leave me some love in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Peace.